Windpay Fantasy Novels presents Stellar Transformations, Zing Ken Bian. Author Aik Tomatoes, Wo Chi Shi Hong Shi, Translators He Man, Rai Lane, Thunderhill. Please support the author in the link below. Book 7 Guests from All Sides. Chapter 4 Overlord as Your Dragon. Everybody at the scene, including the Nine Demons Hall's Majesties, Tang Shan and Luke, never thought that someone would suddenly appear and mercilessly kill one of the Majesties with a stick strike. Still want to run? Tu Fei forms a claw with his hand and immediately catches a Yuan Ying, which shouts miserably right away, quickly save me, brothers. This Yuan Ying is none other than Di Feng's Yuan Ying. Di Feng's head was smashed by Hu Fei's stick from the beginning, but the moment this happened, he immediately combined his soul with his Yuan Ying and wanted to run away. Once he had flown to the side of his brothers, his life would be saved. After all, even though he would have to practice as a loose demon, this would still be no better than losing his life. Li Feng does not want to die yet. Stop. Di Long shouts loudly and gets ready to rush out of the formation at the same time. Holding Di Feng's Yuan Ying firmly in his hand, Hu Fei shouts at once. Stop. Stop the for me. If you take one more step, I'm going to destroy his soul immediately. The other guys also stop for me. If you move, humph, humph. Tu Fei's hand begins to brighten with various streams of demonic elemental energy. Seeing the demonic elemental energy on his hand and the small Yuan Ying being wrapped in the energy, Di Long and the other four majesties in the formation no longer dare to move even a step despite being very anxious. After all, Li Feng's life is currently in Hu Fei's hands. Di Luan, who is not far from Hu Fei is even more afraid of making a move. Given how easily Hu Fei demolished Di Feng and that his power is about the same as Di Feng's, it will definitely not difficult for Hu Fei to kill him. Don't be impulsive. You should know that you have just attacked one of the Nine Demons Hall's Majesties. If you let my fifth brother go, I'll ignore what happened just now. What do you think, monkey brother? Di Long hurriedly says. Now is not the time for him and his brothers to avenge Di Feng. It will already be not bad if they can save Di Feng's Yuan Ying. Hu Fei. He's the Blood Red Cave's second master Hu Fei. Di Luan says at once. When he, Di Jian and Di King came to the Blood Red Cave before, he already saw Hu Fei. But at that time Kin Ye lied about Hu Fei's true power to make him overlook Hu Fei. Who could have thought Hu Fei would be so formidable? The Blood Dread Cave's second master? Di Long, Di Jian and the other majesties are astonished. At the same time, they secretly have a bad feeling. Moments ago they were trying to kill Kin Yu, but now their brother's life has fallen into the hands of the enemy's brother. This is really terrible. I never thought this Kinya fellow was so tough. Not only is he pretty strong, even his brother is so formidable. Luke praises smilingly. Tang Shan, who is also looking on, nods with a smile. At first I thought it would be a one-sided game, but now looks like it's getting more and more interesting. However, once my overlord and your boss come, this play won't be suspenseful anymore. Tang Shan says smilingly. Now let's enjoy the excellent show of Brother Kinyu and the Nine Demons Hall's brothers. Whatever is going on does not affect them so Luke, Tang Shan and their subordinates will simply keep looking on. Kinyu gives Hu Fei a thumb up from inside the formation. Fei Fei, you did pretty well. He says laughingly at once. Hu Fei is very pleased with himself. Still holding Di Feng's Yuan Ying in his furry large hand, he casts a glance at Di Long and the other Di brothers, all of you listen up. Remove that formation right now and let my big brother come out, or else don't blame me.
after saying so, he intensifies the demonic elemental energy on his hand. However, he knows exactly when to stop so his energy only surrounds the Yuan Ying and does not harm Di Feng's soul at all. Stop, you have to chill first. Di Long shouts. Now he wants to calm Hu Fei down first as what he worries about the most is that Hu Fei will kill his brother out of anger. Big brother, could you really want to release Kin Yu? Di Yang and the others look at Di Long with unwillingness. Di Long's mind is also very tense. Even though nobody knows clearly who killed his eighth brother Di Tong yet, they can be sure of one thing, Di Tong's death is linked to Kin Yu. Moreover, Kin Yu stole their treasure storing palace. Not release. Then what's going to happen to fifth brother? Di Long says with a cold humph. His words are filled with frustration. Someone living is more important than someone dead. Eighth brother is already dead. We can't let any accidents happen to fifth brother. Di Long sighs. Di Jian and the other three brothers also sigh in frustration. After all, they cannot just watch Di Feng die. Di Long gives Kin Yu a look. Kin Yu, however, looks at Di Long with an indifferent smile, appearing very relaxed. Hu Fei, we can release your big brother, but there's still a condition. Your big brother Kin Yu stole our nine demons hall's treasure storing palace. As long as your big brother returns it to us, we'll let him go immediately. Di Long is trying as hard as he can to make the best out of this helpless situation. He is not willing to release Kin Yu just like that. At least he wants to get treasure storing palace back first. Before Kin Yu can say anything, Hu Fei roars, damn you. Still try to set some bullshit condition to me? Big brother, I really admire you for stealing even that treasure storing palace. <laughs> Since it's called treasure storing palace, there must be lots of treasures inside, right? Seeing Hu Fei behaving this way, Kin Yu cannot help giving a smile. Hu Fei looks at Di Long and his brothers again and shouts, answer in one sentence, release or not release. If you don't release him, I'm going to kill this brat right away. And don't mention any conditions to me. If you do, I'm going to, kill. The faces of the Di brothers freeze but there is nothing else they can do. Under this situation, they have no choice but to release Kin Yu first. However, at this moment dash. Take care, brothers. A voice rises in the other day brothers' minds through holy sense communication. It is none other than Di Feng's. Their faces immediately change color. Hearing Di Feng's words, they know the choice Di Feng has made. You want to die? Tu Fei's eyes flash with a red light. A stream of demonic elemental energy instantly pierces into the Yuan Ying and destroys the soul. Other people may not know, but Gin Yu knows that Hu Fei is in fact very careful despite his seemingly careless behavior. He has been watching out for Di Feng's self destruction since catching the Yuan Ying and has always been ready to have his demonic elemental energy penetrate the Yuan Ying and destroy the soul. It should be known that to self destruct, the Yuan Ying's energy must be excited, which takes some time. When Hu Fei felt that the Yuan Ying was starting to get excited, he destroyed Di Feng's soul without delay. Once the soul was destroyed, the Yuan Ying became no more than an energy crystal. The Yuan Ying then disappears like a flash. Obviously Hu Fei has put it away. Fifth Brother Di Long and the other Di brothers all cry in agony. At the same time, extremely furious, they immediately rush out of the Great Six Harmonies Heavenly Gates formation, wanting to kill Hu Fei on the spot to avenge their fifth brother's death. Don't mess with me. After destroying Di Feng's soul, Hu Fei roars like crazy. With a movement of his body, 
he arrives at Li Luan's face instantly as if using teleportation. A furious shout is heard and a black stick suddenly smashes down violently as if coming out of thin air. Too fast. Di Liuan finally understands Di Feng's feeling at that time. Facing this kind of speed, he can only think a bit in his mind and simply has no time to make a block with his limbs. Stop. The five who have just rushed out from the Great Six Harmonies Heavenly Gates formation, Di Long, Di Jian, Di Yang, Di Xu and Di Nei, are all terrified. However, Du Fei has been enraged by Di Feng's intention of self-destructing. Qin Yu also knows that Hu Fei is ill-tempered, very ill-tempered. An irate Hu Fei is simply terrifying. Ah! Oh, Hu oh. Fei lets out a sharp cry. His expression is ferocious and full of obstinacy and unruliness. Afterwards, Di Liuan's entire body is smashed with a boom. Blood and flesh are scattered around. However, this time dash. A furious Hufei does not give Di Liuan any chance at all. His black stick immediately smashes on Di Liuan's Yuanying, which is about to flee. The black stick's offense is really so powerful that the Yuanying is completely shattered in the blink of an eye. There is a boom as the smash of Hufei's black stick unexpectedly blows up the Yuanying. The other D brothers, who originally thought that there was still a chance to negotiate, can see that black stick hit the Yuanying clearly. That explosion stupefies them all. Seventh brother is already dead. In just a short time after their fifth brother's death, their seventh brother has also died. Messing with me means death. To Fei's eyes are blazing. All of his hair is standing on end. An extremely ferocious aura comes out from his body and expands in all directions. This absolutely lordly aura is really frightening. He caused the Yuanying to explode with a smash of his stick but his body unexpectedly did not suffer any injuries. You, you. Di Long and the other four brothers look at Hu Fei. They are so angry that they cannot even finish one sentence. Their eyes have reddened. Afterwards, they all growl furiously and charge at Hufei like mad. The fact that two of their brothers have died successively in such a short space of time has driven them crazy. Among the nine brothers, Di Liuan and Di Feng were the only two at the early Dong Xu stage and were also the two weakest. Di Long and the others have rarely let them take part in dangerous affairs and have cared about them very much. However, now both of them are already dead. Holding his sword, Di Long slashes furiously. A green light is flashing in Di Jian's hands. Di Xu swings the long stick in his hands ruthlessly. Disregarding their own safety, the five remaining Di brothers attack Hu Fei fiercely with the intention of killing him in one hit. Don't just rely on strength, Fei Fei. Your speed should be comparable to Di Long's and you're more nimble than him so try your best to evade them. Gin Yu immediately says via his holy sense. Tu Fei is certainly slower than him but is not slower than Di Long in the least. A divine beast is after all not an ordinary beast. How can the only fiery-eyed aquatic monkey in the entire Xiujin world possibly be simple? Don't worry, big brother. <laughs> awesome, awesome, brat, you also use a stick then have a taste of my stick. Tu Fei's voice resounds through the airspace of the Black Rock Island. He himself starts to dodge continuously. He is a monkey and, moreover, a divine monkey so he is extremely agile. His dodging is elegant and follows no regular patterns. Even though he is about as fast as Di Long, it is fairly difficult for Di Long and Li Jian to attack him. <laughs> Tu Fei's black stick and Di Xu's long stick collide with each other. Di Xu is sent flying several tens meters but Tu Fei also retreats several meters. 
However, at this moment Dilong approaches Hufei from behind and thrusts his sword at Hufei's back. Hufei reaches out his hand backwards and swings his stick nimbly. The stick and the flying sword clash. He cannot help leaning forwards. <laughs> awesome, let's try again. He suddenly charges at Dilong. You want to die? Dilong immediately gets excited and concentrates his entire energy. He wants to seize this opportunity to one shot Hufei. However, he suddenly notices that, at this moment, the light in Hufei's eyes unexpectedly intensifies and Hufei's aura becomes even stronger. Hufei has been hiding his power. Dilong is secretly shocked. But he still holds his sword and swings it at Hufei's black stick as hard as he can. One slashes through the air at an extreme speed like lightning. One smashes down with a world shattering force like a huge pillar. The air shakes and the two of them fly backwards simultaneously. They are equally matched. Without using your true form, don't even think about beating me. Hufei thinks disdainfully. When he told Kin Yu before that he could fight Di Long evenly in berserk mode, he meant Di Long's true form. If Di Long does not switch to his true form, Hufei certainly will not need to go berserk. However, while the two of them are flying backwards after clashing fiercely dash. Be careful. When Kin Yu's voice has just risen in Hufei's mind through holy sense communication, Hufei promptly dodges but he is still hit in the back by a sword and suffers a very large wound which is about 30 to 40 centimeters long. His flesh is exposed and blood flows out from that large wound non-stop. Hufei, prepare to die. Dijian shouts furiously and charges at him. Hufei's recovery ability is pretty good, but it cannot compare to Kinyu's meteoric tear. Because that wound is so large, even though it has been covered with demonic elemental energy, blood keeps flowing out from it. <laughs> Noises of bombardment rise continuously inside the Great Six Harmonies Heavenly Gates formation. They are caused by none other than a very anxious Kinyu, who is attacking the formation non-stop. Every attack of his is executed with full force. However. Seven Majesties of the Nine Demons Hall set up this formation together and Kin Yu is even one tier weaker than Di Long so it is simply impossible for him to break the formation. What can I do? What should I do? Kin Yu has become somewhat impatient. Tufei is fairly powerful but facing Di Long, Di Jian and the other three Di brothers bodes rather than well for him. Kin Yu clenches his teeth. A transmitter appears in his hand. It is the transmitter Uncle Lan gave him before. However, when Kin Yu is yet to send a message, <laughs> this is so interesting. Nine Demons Hall brats, you got some status at any rate, who could have thought you'd gang up on an opponent? Tut tut, you're a bit much. A powerful voice resounds through the whole Black Rock Island. At the same time, the water around the island begins to roar. Suddenly, a silhouette appears in the sky. Seeing this man, Kinyu cannot help getting shocked because he has the body of a man and the head of a dragon, looking exceptionally bizarre. This man is wearing an azure imperial robe. The aura he is giving off is as oppressive as the weight of a great mountain. Everybody at the scene can feel a terrifying, irresistible force. My lord. Teng Shan and the guardians from the Azure Dragon Palace immediately bow and say with extreme respect. On one side, Luke and his subordinates also bow and say in salute, It is a great honor to meet you, Overlord Azure Dragon. We are the Blue Water Mansion's Luke and guardians. They are also very respectful. Overlord as your dragon? Kinyu is astonished. The dragon-headed man in front of him is unexpectedly Overlord as your dragon, 
who is called the no one expert of the overseas Xiujin world. Isn't Overlord as your dragon a divine beast? Isn't it impossible for him to take a human form before going through the 9 from 9 th heaven tribulation? Now Kinyu has become doubtful. End of chapter 4 Thanks for listening. If you like the video please press like and subscribe for more. Don't forget to support the original author so we can enjoy more of their books. See you in the next video. Love and peace. Windpay.